Hey guys, I just arrived home from a three day ice climbing trip. So we did ice climbing all day long, sleeping uh, at the front at Alpine Fax. Go check out his channel, I will link him down in the description. And I thought I will talk about the gear I brought for these ice climbing adventures or ice climbing trips. It was multi-pitch ice climbing with a party of two. So enjoy. Of course, this kit is my kit and that's not, not all included in my backpack. For example, the ropes are here as an example. And I just want to talk about some things. So I decided to bring more ropes than I usually carry. In ice climbing, it's common to use twin or half ropes. These are half ropes, so you have two ropes. In this case, 60 meter. The length of the rope yeah, depends on the route you climb. But so this is one set of half ropes. So you can carry one and your body can also carry one. You can also use a single rope. That's a single rope by Maxim Ropes. It's easier with the handling. Some people are just more used to it. But for rappelling, when this is 60 meters, you can only rappel 30 meters. So you maybe have to bring a tag line like this, which is only to pull the rope back when you're rappelling, or you have to use the beetle as caper, which I want to talk about later. So that's it with ropes. Now, to carry all this, you need a backpack. It's good if you have a lightweight Alpine backpack. I really like this one, Sierzo 28. It's a 28 liter backpack by Arcturix. You can carry your ice tools and it's quite light. So yeah, talking from ice tools. I use these from Austria Alpine. They are quite nice for ice climbing. I can even change the angle of the pick. Then for my boots, I bring crampons. I really like having a monopoint like this. These crampons are the new Petzl Dart. So I can change the front point and I have a back for them so they don't damage my other things. I can attach this on the outside of my backpack. Now, for protection on ice, you need ice screws. I usually bring like 13 to 16. It also depends on the route you climb. Sometimes for the anchor, you need two screws on the bottom, two screws on the top. So four screws are gone for anchors. Maybe you even need a three screw anchor. So then even five or six are gone. And the remaining ones can be used for the climb. Yeah, but when there are like bolt anchors, you have more screws to climb with or you will leave some screws behind. I bring at least one or two 22 centimeter screws for a Balakov thread for repelling or for the anchor building. My main screw length is this, it's 17 centimeters. Then I also have shorter screws like this, 13 centimeter and one 10 centimeter screw. Of course, it depends on the thickness of the ice you're climbing on. My quick draws. Here I have Petzl Anger S. So it's a smaller one. I even have these from Edel Reed. It's the lightest quick draw in the world. You can also climb on ice with them, but they are really small. And then you have big gloves. It's really hard to use them. And especially when you have two ropes, yeah, it can be annoying to use these small carabiners. So maybe sometimes I use them for an emergency quick draw, just bring some of them. But my main quick draws are these. I have some extendable ones with 60 centimeter sling. So this can reduce rope drag. And then the normal length just for clipping. But yes, now you see it's less quick draws than ice screws because I also bring three, yeah, how to say, it's a 
quick draw with a shock absorber because sometimes the screws are in not good conditions or the ice is not in a good condition and then I add one of these. For a long time I climbed with only two but I just started to use three of them and I can also use them as a normal quick draw when I'm out of normal quick draws. Now for protection on trees I use these shoulder length slings with Petzl Angel L. It's a big carabiner. I have at least two of them. Sometimes I bring more. It also depends on the route. If there are a lot of trees, you can really good or use them for protection on trees. Really nice. When there is rock and you do some mixed climbing, you may consider bringing some nuts. So yeah, sometimes I bring some nuts just for in case. Especially these DMM half nuts are really light. And also if you don't have an Abalakov tool, which I want to talk about later, you can use a nut to make an Abalakov. Yes, talking from the Abalakov, <laughs> now let's see this. What's that? That's some accessory cord, in this case 6mm. Some people prefer to use 7mm. I already pre-cut it. So I don't have to use the knife when I'm under a rope. And I can use this, what's approximately one meter of accessory cord to make an Abalakov thread by using this self-made Abalakov tool. It's just made from wire. You can pull this through a hole to make a rappel. Also carry one really small screw link because maybe it's needed that I have to lower someone and I have to leave this behind. Yeah, it's really small, but small diameter ropes will fit inside, but it will not fit on a bolted anchor. Talking from anchors and repelling. For anchor building, I bring two aramide cords. It's different lengths. This one is six meters and this one is I'm not sure, four or five. With this I can make a three-point anchor or maybe even a four-point anchor if needed. But in most cases you would just need a two-point anchor. As a central point of the anchor, I'm often using these anchor rings by DMM. Since they are lighter than a locking carabiner, they can be loaded multi-directional. And I really like to use them with a girth hitch is the name, I guess, to build an anchor. If I use a single rope, I can use the spiel as caper for repelling the full length of the rope. But I want to, don't want to get too much into details of this, but you can attach this to the anchor, you attach the rope here, then you can repel, and then when you pull it, uh, it will re release. Now for belaying and so on. At first, of course, I have a harness. Sometimes I use a more heavy one by Arcturix. And I also have got this super lightweight one by Blue Eyes with eye screw clippers. I guess that's how you call them in English. I have one in the back for my anchor building material for the long eye screw. Then on the sides, I have two of them for eye screws and also for my eye tools. And in the front I have one small one, or sometimes even two small ones, for the short screws. So I always have separated the long screws and the short screws, so I can use just the red screw in the right situation. Now, the belay device. In most cases I use an alpine tube, so this means you can use this in guide mode. So it has some kind of an auto block function when you are belaying one or even two seconds. Yeah, which device you use depends mainly on the rope you use. When you use a thin half rope or even twin ropes, you have to bring a small tube like this. And when you use thicker ropes, you need a bigger tube. Yeah, so when I'm climbing, I only bring one of them. Now the carabiners. Yeah, <laughs> that's the carabiners I bring. I have one real lightweight one, I can use this for belaying. I also have got this HMS carabiner, which is round, so I have less friction when you're belaying or when you use it in guide mode. 
because when the rope gets icy and hard, it's good to have less friction on the carabiner. And the carabiners like this have more friction. Then I have one carabiner with Aust Austria Alpine to attach myself to the anchor with a clove hitch. Small locking carabiner by Crivel. I use it to attach the tube in guide mode or when repelling, I use this for my Prosec. And one spare HMS carabiner with a teep lock and a climbing technology rolling lock so you can do some simple rescue things and sometimes like two or up to four spare carabiners for building an anchor. Two Prosec cords, why two? Yeah, one is none and two are one. And when you drop one of these, I can use the second one for rescue things, it's better. But when it's wet and cold, sometimes I bring a petzl shunt and use this as a prusik or let's say as a third hand, because this will not freeze up, but this can freeze up when it's wet and cold. Okay, I'm getting out of breath, <laughs> almost. Let's change the position. Whew. Okay, what's also in my backpack is the following. It's a first aid kit. This is just a pouch. In my first aid kit is an emergency bandage. This is for making a pressure bandage for stopping the bleeding and covering the wound. An emergency blanket. It can be used for a lot of things. For example, you can also make emergency sunglasses out of this. I have a tourniquet. Tourniquet is to stop critical bleeding. It comes from the military. And since I'm a former military guy, I really like these. Then, I also add some, let's say, survival stuff to my first aid kit. So I have a lighter to make fire in emergency. Also I've got a whistle with a cord so I can place this around my neck. A fire starter or a fire steel. Two tampons to start a fire. This one to tighten screws if needed. This one to sharpen ice tools or crampons when you hit rock too hard. This can happen. Some cord. Some medicine, sometimes against yeah, fluid shit or sometimes also against headache. These, not sure it's called, pflaster or stickers with some fancy animals on them. If someone is a bit injured and is mm, yeah, complaining about things that are not bad. <laughs> some fast sugar, not sure what it's called in English. Because when you're really out sugared or under sugared, this will got, get in your blood really fast. Alcohol wipes to disinfect small cuts. Emergency BB bag. And also this magic heat thing. This is not activated right now, but when you move a small chip inside here, it gets warm and you can warm up your hands. Yeah, speaking from hands, let's go down here. When it's wet and you have snow in the route, it's really important to have gloves that are made for, out of Gore-Tex, like these from Arcterix. It's the Alpha glove, if, I, uh, if I'm right. So you have the outer glove, which is hard shell, and the inner glove, which is fleece. So this protects you from the wet and this from the cold. When there's no snow, snow in the route, you can use thin gloves like these. It's the Arcterix rope glove. It's not insulated but it protects you from wind and you have a good feeling in your hands. Yes. It's handy to bring spare gloves, maybe also mittens. Yeah, but I would bring spare gloves that can fit underneath these Gore-Tex gloves. Yes, you can see here, this is a topo. So this is a route that you can climb. Yeah, where do you find things like this? You find this in books like these. So there are a lot of topos inside, 
but you don't want to bring a book like this to the ice climb. So buy these books and then use a, yeah, a printer, print it out, make it waterproof and bring this to the climb. Of course, here yeah, my shoes, I almost forgot them. I got these new La Sportiva Trunco Tower Extreme. I covered the colored areas with a black with black paint because I don't like these fancy colors. Yeah, here and there you can attach the crampons. So they are category D, really stiff sole, nice for ice climbing, also for mixed climbing. But yeah, I haven't used them for a long time right now. I hope I forgot nothing. Oh, almost forgot. Water up there. So this is one liter of water. Some people prefer to bring warm tea. That's also okay. When you fill up water, just make sure to bring hot water or warm water. This will take longer until it's cold and it's longer enjoyable. Now getting to the center of this massive gear thing. Yeah, sunglasses. I carry them like this or maybe even in the protective case, but most of the time only this and I don't bring this to the climb. An emergency headlamp. I often have this Petzl E-Lite in my pants. Because in worst case you leave your backpack behind then it gets dark and you have your no light, then you're fucked up. <laughs> Especially I need a lot of energy when I'm doing ice climbing. For this, you can bring energy bars. I really like the bars with a lot of carbohydrates like oat snack, cliff bar, energy cake, protein, energy bar. So they have protein, also energy, or you, you are hardcore and when you don't need this a lot, just bring like this or energy five, it's like emergency food. This also has got a lot of carbohydrates. Yeah, so it's really fast energy and this is really crucial. Of course, a helmet and here I have my main headlamp for ice climbing or for climbing at night because this has got a really wide beam. That's a LED Lancer Neo 4. They also have other headlamps but since this headlamp is not really bright, I bring a third one. Yeah, because I do a lot of things at night and when things go wrong, you don't want to be without light. So this is my Olight H2R Nova. It's a really strong headlamp. Sometimes I only bring this and that, but for climbing at night, this is just nicer because you see a lot. Since I do photography and also vlogging, bring my GoPro with five or even six batteries. A spare battery for my Canon, which I'm using for filming right now. Keys for my car. I leave my keys for the home or for my flat in the car. So I only bring the car key. And of course my mobile phone for emergencies or sometimes also for Instagram. But if you don't make a living out of it or if you don't get money, then don't waste your time using your mobile phone, which is really important in emergency situations and don't risk to lose this in the snow. Better bring a GoPro or something like this and use that for photos and this only for emergency. Okay, now uh, huh. let's talk about clothing. I will start with the base layer. So what's on my skin? At first, merino wool underwear, because I really like the feeling on the skin. This is still wet from the ice climbing, but when you have, have it wet and you have it on the skin, this wool from the merino sheep is still feeling warm and comfortable. As a base layer for my upper body, I use a long sleeve in most of the times. This is by Amadillo Merino. It's also merino wool, 100%. Sometimes I'm using the net shirt from Brynir of Norway, but I also really like yeah, this merino shirt and you can use it solo without anything covering it up because it doesn't look as strange as a net shirt. 
Same for the feet. So merino socks, also again from Amadillo Merino. Yeah, they come in different lengths and thicknesses. You can also use like wool power, smart wool. There are a lot of companies doing merino wool things and really love merino wool, especially Amadillo Merino. For my head. In Corona times, it's important to bring a mask because maybe you want to go shopping after or before the ice climb and get some something to drink, something to eat. Then you have to cover up your mouth, at least here in Germany. So I bring a super lightweight, self-made Corona mask. Yeah, speaking from masks, for my head, I usually brought a thin merino beanie, but I started to prefer balaclava made from merino. Again, from Amadillo Merino, sorry for the advertisement, but they make really nice things. So this balaclava covers up my head, my neck, if needed, it covers up my face, and yeah, even the front part of my neck. So this is all packed in, it's packed safe, it's merino wool, it feels nice, it feels good. It's under my helmet, and when it's too warm, I can pull on my neck and slide this from my head while having the head or the helmet still on my head. Yeah, but when it gets really windy, this is not good enough. I can use the hood of my jacket or I have this windproof beanie and I wear this or on top of this when it's really cold or only that and this around my neck. Yeah. Now back to the body. On my legs, depending on how cold it is and how wet it is, I have more like a mid layer. Sometimes I'm using a base layer, also again thin merino wool, but in this case I was using, or well, this time I was using this light insulation, it has got fleece and here it's G-loft insulation, it's the Ultra Pants by Carinthia, was keeping my legs warm and you can see it's still also wet from the ice climbing and it felt very comfortable, of course it's synthetic, but I have hairy legs, so that's totally okay. On my upper body, on top of this thin merino shirt, I was using the ultra shirt by Carinthia. It's also the same kind of clothing like this, so it's insulated in some areas and for example the neck, some part beads, some parts of the back and the sleeves are made out of fleece. So this is a good yeah, mid layer to keep you warm when it's really cold and the layering principle allows me to add more layers or to remove a layer. So this is really modular. I'm covering up my mid layer of the legs with these hard shell pants by Klettermusen. It's a Durin 2.0. It's like a ski touring pants or indeed it's in ski touring pants. So on the inlay you have this reinforcements. So it's safe with crampons, don't damage your pants. It's secured to the boot. I added this loop to make it even more secure. You can tighten it and yeah, it's let's say waterproof. It protects you from melting snow or even from the water that comes down a river. And really important, especially when it's hard shell, is ventilation. So this has got a big ventilation zipper on the side to get a lot of air in and pockets to at like energy cake or the emergency headlamp. On the upper body, often it's enough to just wear a wind jacket on top of a Mirovino shirt or over a net shirt, especially when it's sunny and it's only a bit windy, it's not so cold, or wear this over that mid layer. But when it gets cold or you have a lot of snow in the route or on the ice, Gore-Tex is a must or something similar. It doesn't have to be Gore-Tex. It can be a Sympatex or some other membranes. But you want it to be protecting you against water. It has to be breathable. And what I really like is when you have big ventilation zippers under your arms that you can use for ventilation. The hood is really nice. When it gets really wet from above, you can use the hood over your helmet and cover you up, protect you from the wet and cold. Now, when it's really cold and you're belaying, this can take up like 
20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe even longer, you need a puffy jacket or an insulation jacket. Yeah, the last three days I was also trying out a down jacket, but I really don't like down jackets. Why? Because down falls together, it loses its insulation when it gets wet. And when you have like, not only in emergencies, but also as some unexpected situations where it gets really wet and cold, a synthetic jacket like this one from North Face, for example, is just safer than the down jackets. So this is why I personally prefer synthetic jackets. And yeah, in this case, this super lightweight from North Face. You can of course also use heavier ones, thicker ones. It all depends on the conditions you are in and the climb you're doing. Okay, let me check if I forgot anything. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, here's my face again. So that's it, I hope. You can understand my English. Sorry, I'm still a bit tired from the climbing. And yeah, feel free to leave comments. What do you have in your backpack? What don't you bring? Or did I forgot anything which is really important? Of course, a shuffle and also the long stick for avalanche security can be added if there is an avalanche. Hey, this is danger <laughs> all right so now thank you for watching make sure to check out my other videos and looking forward to see you again bye